Okay, my question to you is Have you gone through the entire sutta? The one what you wanted to talk, MN 136. So, what did you understand? Uh, oh, my understanding is that the, the, the Kamma doesn't come immediately all the time. So, but if someone had some good thing, like if they go, go to the heaven, it means at some part in the past they've done the Kamma, or at the time of death they have the Samaditi. And uh, in general, that's the main takeaway. No. See, he gives four kind of people, right? So before that, have you understood what is he trying to say? And he talks about a person who comes and talks to Samiddhi. Yeah, I thought I saw the thing. So he says, if I were to read the Pali, Ogham Kaya Kamam Ogham Vachi Kamam Ano Kamam Eva Sachanti. Yes. If you are doing anything by body and speech, it doesn't lead to any destination or any Kamma. Only what is done by mind attracts penalty. This is the question. So he says that Atti Samapati Yam Samapatim Samapano Na Kinchi Vedai Vedayati Iti. That means you will not experience Vedana, this feeling. Okay, so they don't feel anything. There's no feeling. Yeah, that one I did not understand. What is uh, such when one enters this night? Feel anything at all? Now, if you take care of your mind, you don't feel about speech and body. If somebody were to take care of speech and mind, sorry, only the mind. The body and the speech need not be experienced as a feeling. Meaning bad experience, good experience, all kind neutral experience have got nothing to do with body and speech. That is what his contention is. Is a feeling? In body and speech. That's what he's saying there. Tamapatti. Tamapatti means ending. Or attainment. So what does he feel? He feels nothing there. Mm -hmm. so that's what he says I've understood out of Buddha teaching. Mm -hmm. Got it. This is the crux of the question. Mm -hmm. It's not the what you have sent uh, Ariu about uh, Samiddhi coming and asking. Right. So I, I, I was looking at the answer and I did, did not entirely understand that. But I did not understand the, this question also. No, you did uh, not understand the question and hence the answer cannot be understood. Now, okay, if you okay. were to understand the question, you will understand the answer. I don't have to explain. It is very simple. If nothing is to be experienced in body and speech, and if you take care of feeling that arises in the mind, then that's it. There's nothing else to be done. Because all the feeling is appearing only in the mind. Now the question is, isn't it or not? Or is body feeling is one thing, speech feeling is another thing, mind feeling is another thing? Or is body and speech feeling is in the mind itself? So if you take care of the mind, aren't you taking care of the body and speech? 
I, I guess I don't understand what is the feeling by the speech. What does that mean? Why you feel something when you speak, right? You feel good, you feel bad, you feel ugly, you feel neutral, you feel horrible, you feel something, right? What do you feel? You feel. And when you touch something by your body, uh, you will feel happy, you will feel sad, you will feel neutral, you will feel horrible, you will feel upset, you feel everything in the body also. Let's say you are sitting on a rough uh, bed, feel roughness of the bed. You can't say that I don't feel anything in that. Or you can't say that oh, it is felt by the mind but not by the body. Yeah, the feeling word used in Pali, I was also many times confused, but I, I concluded it like that last time also. I said. The English feeling is made of three things perception and the feeling. So the Pali feeling is actually the tone of feeling. We feel something and it has three categories like uh, Sukha, Dukha or Asukha, Dukha. Right? Sukha, Dukha, Asukha, Asukha, Dukha is not feeling on its own. Feeling is of something. Yes. So, in, there, in English. Yeah, there is no proper no. translation for <laughs> one who feels. What does he feel? In Indian yeah. languages, you can split it out, but in mm. English, it's possible because there is no other word to say unless you are an Indian to explain what is feeling and what is non-feeling. So I think I understand the feeling is different from the English one. That, that I definitely understand. See, when in English we talk, you use feeling word. I feel like killing you. I feel, I feel good. I feel like, uh, I feel like it is, it's, it's a blue color. So perception also feeling, feeling is also feeling, and sankhara is also feeling. In English, all the three are feeling. Yeah, yeah, they use it very uh, vaguely. Yeah, but but here it's specifically our we're talking the feeling of the, the deeds, right, of the kama, and the, which is whatever it is, are you? So you will feel in the mind. That is his question. That is his assessment of Buddha teaching, whatever it is, it is only appearing in the mind. Mm -hmm. Isn't that real? You think it is false? That's the question you need to ask yourself. You call that by whatever language you want, but whatever is felt as good or not good and neutral, is it appearing in the mind? If yes, if I don't, if I just take care of the mind, I not still get released. And that's the question, or that's the input what he gives to Samiddhi. So he's saying only if you take care of the mind, you don't feel the, the, the come. You don't feel anything when you do the body and speech come. Meaning there is no consequence of doing anything wrong or right or neutral in body and speech. It's only the mind which is important. Why does he say that? Because Buddha says Mano Pubbangama Dhamma Mano Setta Mano Maya. And because of that, he gets into this thinking. Mm. So Potaliputta gets this uh, wrong view, or rather a view, let's not call it as a wrong view. It's a view that Buddha has taught this. Why? Mano Pubbangama Dhamma Mano Setta Mano Maya. Mind is the forerunner of all things. So if mind is forerunner of all things, then why should anything that done by speech and body should be equal, equally important? Why can't I just take care of the mind and everything is taken care? Isn't it correct? Think that is just MN 136. So we shouldn't be reading the entire thing and taking one section of it and say, ah, this one I don't understand. First, you understand the question. What is the question? He's correct in his question, not a wrong question. 
Are you not convinced? Is my question. Isn't it true? Yeah. I thought if let's say you don't have any bad intention, then even let's say the speak it, speech is harsh, there's no kamma that's made. Exactly. Exactly. It's not about kamma. What he says is that if you are thinking that there is a body kamma and the speech kamma and the mind kamma, the other two are of no importance. The only thing which is important is mind. The kamma, what is done by the mind, is more important than the other two. Why? Because mind is what everything is. So if you take care of the mind, aren't you take care, taking care of the speech and the body? But I, but I guess this is only for the, 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 the one who's performing the kamma, but there's also a receiver of it, right? If you The kamma is only for the person who performs. Isn't it or not? Are you are you able to transfer to some other person your karma saying that okay you take it? No, what I'm saying is if I slap you without any intention, but you got slapped, what about that? And that is not here yeah, meant. I got it. That see, you get unpleasant situations. You get unpleasant situations. So now you can't say that oh I had some karma with him. No. There is another sutta, like somebody had called me yesterday. So he was telling me that, uh, ha, Axel, now he has, uh, gone, he has uh, become a monk by name Jinas, Jinakusala, and he settled down in Sri Lanka. So we were discussing about Kamma. So I told him, there is one sutta which beautifully explains that everything is not Kamma, and especially if you are getting uh, fever or some diseases or vata, pitta, kapha, something like that. It's got nothing to do with your kamma. Yeah. So I was always so far coming with many years back, I was thinking that kamma is a relation between two guys. So it is always the book is open. So I was thinking when this book will be closed because I might have bitter, I might have killed so many people in my life. I have to, those have to be undone. Only then settlement, it's like a money between two. I borrowed money from you. Right? So I have to give it back to you only. <laughs> yeah, so the difference between a Buddha Dhamma and a Jain Dhamma is the Buddha Dhamma doesn't really look at Kamma, that everything is Kamma. The Jain Dhamma takes everything is Kamma. So they make it like a heavy Kamma and a light Kamma. Punya Bhagya is a light karma, Papa Bhagya is a heavy karma. So the objective of a Jain is to reduce the bad karma, that is heavy karma, by doing some austerity. And one of the greatest austerity they found out, which is going to work out, is the number of hairs on your body. So you pull the hairs. Each hair represents one heavy karma. Isn't that actually they are doing the bad karma again? No, that bad karma, good karma, I don't know. But the method of doing it is that you have to remove the karma. The soul is transmigrating because it is attached to karma. By nature, the soul doesn't have to exist. It is held into position by the karma. So there, Buddha and Jain are the same. Even though Buddha doesn't say there is a soul or no soul, whatever is there is held up by the karma. Why? Consciousness is karma. Karma, sorry, the khetta is karma, the field is karma. Consciousness bija, vinyana bija, and craving sineho. In Jain, there is, a concept, is there a concept like getting Nibbana in this body? Yeah, it's there. Yes, Everything is there. The only it's not after death, right? It's not after death. They have to wait for the death. No, it's not like that. It is, you can get relieved right now, but the soul will depart and merge with the original consciousness. Something like what is there in the Hindu scriptures, the same thing is there. That by nature, the soul doesn't want to transmigrate. It transmigrates because of the karma. And what does Buddha says? 
transmigration is happening due to what? To condition. What's the condition? Karma is one of the condition. There can't be anything other than karma. It sets a condition. For whichever realm it is supposed to be heading to. Right? Even in the same sutta, what does he say? There are four types. First type. One who did, does bad deeds gets bad. One who does bad deeds but gets good. One who does good deed gets good, but one who does good deeds gets bad. The four of them. So that doesn't promise that if you were to do good deeds, you will get good result. You might get good result, you might get bad result also. But that's how the nature is. Wow! I kill, I rape, I do hundred things and in the end I pray God. That is exactly what it's all about. I pray God. And uh, just before the, this thing happens, the God comes. So there is one uh, mythology or uh, story in the Hindu scripture. There would be a person, a Brahmin, who has a son by name Narayana. And what happens is that uh, the, this guy would be doing 100 different wrong things and then they keep on telling him that, no, look, you have to tell Narayana. So he would have named his son Narayana. One day it so happens that Narayana has gone to the field and this guy is suffering and then he is about to die and he calls the name Narayana. And the Yama has held him and he is taking him to the hell. And in the meanwhile, the Vishnu uh, followers or the Vishnu Dutta, the messengers of Vishnu come in search of this soul, which is supposed to enter into hell. <coughs> and they say that you have to give it to me. Why? He has said the name of Narayana. And the Yama Dutta, messenger of death, says that no, he has done a lot of bad deeds. No, that is irrespective. He has said Narayana. So you can take, show him hell, but get him to heaven. So they agree. So then what happens is that as per rules, he is supposed to show the hell. So from distance, the soul is shown hell realms. Uh, the Patala and then the Naraka and all that and how the beings are. Uh, ripped apart their bones and skull and uh, as Buddha explains the same explanation is there so there's no difference there and then they show heaven and uh, it shows how the beings are enjoying their life far better than a human existence so he says I want to go here he says no this is not where you are supposed to go wow I'm supposed to get a better one yes you are going to go into Vishnu place, which is far superior than this heaven. And he goes there. But he has done all the bad deeds. There is not even one deed which is good in his entire life. But in the end he uttered Narayan. So even these days when, the, when they are carrying the dead body, the tradition is that you keep on saying Narayana, 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 Narayana in his ear. Why? Because the hearing is the one thing which goes in the last. Eyes goes away first, nose goes away next, taste goes away next, touch goes away next. Mind and ear are intact. After the person is dead, there is some mental thing happening. So the being is circling there and hear. So when they keep on saying Narayana, 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 till they take the body to the funeral ground. And in the funeral ground, if they say Narayana, it hears. This is from Hindu. Let's take Tibetan. Tibetan has 49 days ritual for this. Bardo. Bardo. Now you can exactly position that Bardo to go wherever you want it to go. In 49 days. At least this Narayana thing is only for that day. After that, that person also forgets and the others also forget that he ever said Narayana until that other person dies. But here, 49 days. So, 
doing good deeds will not give good result doing bad deeds will not give you bad result all the time correct in that case what he is he asking he is not a fool he is saying if i take care of the mind can am i not taking care of the body and the speech that's a question see when we read sutta we need to open up and think in a different way if you just read that english and pali or whatever it is you will get up and especially this kind of sutta it is not easy comprehend so you have to first stop at the question itself what is he asking don't go down you shouldn't do that answer is forget it are you convinced with this question if i am that person i am convinced what has he done wrong totally putta has not done anything wrong by asking this question it is perfect question it's a most appropriate question what are we trying to condition or uncondition whatever we want to say nibbana is where the body speech or the mind the mind nibbana is not in the body there is no concept of nibbana in the body there is no concept of nibbana in the speech there is only concept of nibbana in the mind can't i take care of the mind yes what i was just thinking when i first read it like because you remember there are three type of karma by the body by the mind by the speech so when you see the question ah that's not the right one then go go on from from there did not think about why he's asking that i we should always question see you should always not take take uh, chance see what we do when we read sutta is that we get biased we overly look at or underly look at or we say ah, that guy is an idiot so i want to be i am interested in knowing what buddha said no nobody is an idiot there none of the suttas where they have asked question they are not idiots please understand i need to understand that so when i am reading the sutta i should read it without prejudice without any conclusion and then i will understand otherwise i will not understand otherwise i will see for me is what i need nibbana right so i care a damn what that question is i will just go into the answer because i i, I don't care what is he asking he is a fool anyway because he says that reverend potali putta don't say that don't misrepresent the buddha for misrepresent buddha is not good and the buddha would not say say this you say ah that's exactly what i leave that section aside i know he's a fool do you really know he's a fool no he is a follower of the buddha he is understood he is a wanderer but he has met the buddha he has explained and he has understood what he has understood this is the question yes but is he a follower of the buddha cuz they call him abu so but does that mean he's necessarily a follower no of the buddha? follower in the sense that he is understood right so you don't now otherwise why would he put that reverend yeah yeah okay abu so yeah. anyway leave it forget it he is not a follower of buddha so what does it change nothing He has asked this question. Samidhi took that question. He didn't answer. He came to the Buddha. But he did answer. Right? He said everything leads to dukkha. No, what he says, but Reverend, there is such an attainment where one who enters it does not feel any at all. And then he and says. Then that's. That's referring to our hut, right? But get all that. He's, why are you going into something which is irrelevant here? He does he say it's our hut? He says when you get an attainment, samapatti, don't you stop feeling? I don't understand that. What what is samapatti other than say our hut? No, but thing is like this. 
again are you one of the biggest mistake is to categorization i'm telling you the more we categorize things the worse it gets we shouldn't be categorizing unless he says that this is arhat phala samapatti as he put there no he only says samapatti as he put arhat phala samapatti no so there's so there's only four samapatti right or is that or are you i am again talking from the sutta point of view let's stick to the sutta does the sutta make any mention of arhat phala samapatti or some something related to that he says at ki cha ko sa avso samapatti kam samapattim samapanno na kinchi vedeti when person who enters into the samapatti that means he is completed what should be completed he is completed if you are completing the journey would you still feel the journey that's his question and the answer is no if you have reached the destination like you flew from bangalore to san francisco you landed in san francisco would you still be thinking you are in bangalore no absolutely not that will be stupid in the body also you will not feel you are still in bangalore in the speech also you will not feel you are in bangalore in the mind also you will not feel in the bangalore is there anything wrong in that statement you went home you didn't think after coming out from airport you didn't feel and think and speak and do all the things what you were done while you were in bangalore you were doing exactly the thing what you were done in us or in your hometown or wherever you stay isn't it right that is samapatti the meaning of samapatti is when you end when you complete when you are given a task like coding when you finish the product you still feel that the product is incomplete no whatever features have to be there in the product you then it's what else you still feel no you can't be feeling yes squared Yes, so I did not understand what that means, but I'm curious why are these two questions asked together? What is this all about? Karma is a feeling. What you get? It's not a karma. Means something is going to come and do something to you. You will feel you are in trouble. You feel you are in pleasure. You feel you are in neutral. All the three are result of karma. First and foremost, do you know what is karma? that's my question next question do you know what really is karma intention no in in so you do you intend to do something it is karma but what is karma what is karma deed in english deed what is deed okay here it is the situations what you get or what i get are different based upon what based upon your deed and based upon my deed the situation now you are sitting in san francisco that's a deed which has taken you there whether you are suffering or whether you are not suffering whether you are in pleasure or not in pleasure whether you are in neutral or not in neutral is because of that come at the present state at which you are right you have a wife i have a wife but they both are not the same you have a son i have a son they both are not the same you have a house i too have a house but they are not the same you agree with me aren't you feeling it is different house when you came here you didn't feel it is your house when i come to your house i am not going to feel that it is it is my house i would always feel it is your house but it's not it's not your house you have taken it on rent but you still feel it's your house right that deeds whatever you have done to make up things is karma got it 
there is a feeling. If you don't feel, then there is no karma, to be honest. If you stop feeling, then there is nothing called as karma. Yes, go ahead. So, so, okay, so I, I guess there are two kind of feelings. There are many it, kinds of feelings. There are 18 kinds of feelings. There are 108 kinds of feelings. Yeah, so I, I'm referring to when initially when you say they're feeling for the body, uh, speech, mind, uh, deeds, you, you're talking feeling when you're doing those, performing those deeds, right? But now you're talking about the the Kama Vipaka, right? The, the, I'm feeling this house or whatever. So that's the fruit of the deed. So those are, is that right? So we're talking to. Now you're complicating things. It's simple. You are doing certain action. That action creates feeling, yes or no. If you say that doesn't create any feeling, then you have to start from the beginning. Let's say you are walking on the road. You don't know anything, but on your on your foot, lots of ink are being peeled. You have no idea about it. Do you have feeling? The feeling is neutral. But yet it is karma. But you are not feeling it. But you are not feeling, of feeling of it. So since there is no intention of killing, you didn't do any deed actually. So but the there action, is a... what is this actions become karma? When action is added by feeling, so, action done with the feeling. Taking his example, a very apt example. You're walking on the road and you have around 1000 ants and you're walking straight. You're looking at the signal or intersection and you're crossing, but there is uh, tons of ants. So you don't have any idea there are ants down there. But you are still stamping them and killing them in an instant. Did they have a karma of getting stamped by you? First question. You have not seen, but did they have in their karma that they are supposed to be killed by you? Because they had killed you, so, so many beings have to be killed at one. So around out of 1000, yeah. let us say you killed around uh, 138 ants. Somebody were to sit and count. Wow, 138 killed. They have karma to be killed, but not by you, some by someone, anyone. Okay, now hold on. So the first question comes is, what is karma? They are staying there. Is that their karma? Or you walking on that is karma? Or they staying and you walking both included in karma? Or they feeling and you feeling that no feeling itself is karma. I mean, you didn't feel anything, but they felt right. They they felt killed. They felt they felt pain. Damn, at anything which is living, will feel the pain. But you never had an intention to kill them. Absolutely no intention. Till you stamped. But the stamp? Whether it is human being or animal or a bird or an insect or whatever it is, including bacteria, will feel the pain. Your action is neutral to be said. So now, question comes. Did they feel anything? That feeling he's talking. Yes, they felt. What? Triangulated. They felt triangulated. Now you can't say, I don't think so, they feel, they felt strangulated. But strangulation happened where, in the body or speech or the mind? The mind. Body can't feel anything. The speech cannot feel anything. Only the mind feels. That is his question. So he is asking this question, isn't it or not, that when you get Samapatti, when you end the journey, there is no feeling at all. You are across the feeling. Or you think that you still feel. That is his question. Uh, 
I know you talk about different type of attainments, but isn't that the only state that you stop feeling is when you reach Arhat? Let's take that. Still, it is his question is valid. Yes, Reyes. Feeling is still there, right? Like, just the senses don't run behind them. <laughs> you have gone into another direction. Good, good uh, thing, but it's good. Okay, hold on. Hold to, hold to your question. Let us first solve this question itself. Samapati. Let's give you a chance, saying that, yeah, Arhat Pala Samapati. That means what he's saying is right. Simple. No, that is what he is saying, right? He is saying the body feeling and the speech feeling is not going to be there, only the mental feeling is going to be there. If you were to address the mental feeling, you will stop feeling, which is samapatti. Which body feeling? The man walking, he feels the walking, you No, when you are, when you have a body, there is a feeling which appearing in the body, kaika vedana. If you are not attending, it won't be. Right now, your back is support, touching the pillow. Now, if your awareness goes there, you feel. If your awareness doesn't you go there, you won't feel. Exactly. So, isn't he right? Is my question. Where Buddha says he's a fool. I'm asking this question. First, I have to ask myself this question, right? I'm only talking about the question, we are not going to go into the answer. Isn't it right? He is right, actually, honestly. So he is asking. I agree, to that. I agree to that extent. Yes. That uh, I am not around, but I am not killing the end, and I am no feeling about it. <laughs> yes, I don't have a feeling of the body or the speech. I can have a Feeling of the mind, because everything. So to, to that extent, I am <laughs> that kind of yes, question. That kind of question it is. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's correct. So I am not feeling the body. I am not feeling the as the speech. I feel only the mind, which is that is what I have learned out of Buddha teaching. Why mano pubbangama dhamma mano setta mano maya. That's the reason. In fact, Buddha should have appreciated him. He says he is such a fool. No, yet this conversation is not with not, Buddha is not come yet into picture. Now this conversation will be refined by someone. No, no, it is by Samiddhi. He goes and tells him that this is what he said. Yeah, so now Buddha proves what Samiddhi says is right. No, then he says that Samiddhi, you could have replied, but you didn't reply because you didn't know. Let me teach you. Why? Actually, his question is valid. Have I thought it like that? Meaning, in any one of these difficult sutta, first we have to put ourselves to see at what level have I reached? And if I have not reached, I shouldn't take that sutta at all. Yes, are you correct? Sam Samiti eventually answered when he said it's dukkha. It's okay. See, everything is dukkha only in the end. Even mental is dukkha. We'll leave it. That is like a, yeah, yeah. He, you said he did not answer. I'm saying he did answer. What did he answer? What did he answer? Where does he talk about dukkha? He said after doing intentional deeds by way of body, speech, or mind, one feels suffering. Ah, fine, that's it. But uh, the samapati is no feeling, right? Yeah, I, I mean, and and uh, the the uh, Udai was explaining for, for, to him uh, for him, and then Buddha said, "Udai, you are also a fool." Yeah. So he said, "Both the people are fool." Yes. So now we have to these kind of suttas we should not take honestly. No, who is speaking? 
in that conversation, who is speaking and who is replying is not clearly written. Like, well, now what? What are we to say to this senior mom? Who is saying that? Samiti is saying that. Okay, Samindhi hold on. Saying. So let me give you till here, and then I will not talk after that. Okay. So let's understand till here. So he says, don't say that, Reverend Putali Putta. Don't say that. Don't misrepresent. And but Reverend, there is such an attainment where the one who enters, it does not feel anything at all. This so is that's what Samidhi says. Okay. Samidhi says. That means he is accepting to whatever Putali Putta is saying. Partially, partially accepting. Out of two, he is accepting the second one. That means when you have an attainment, there's no feeling. So he feels happy. What I've said, you are accepting, right? Except for body and speech, if I take care of the mind, ultimately you are coming to what I'm saying. So he asked Reverend Samiddhi, how long it has been since you went forth? He asked his seniority. Not long, Reverend, three years. So now it is come from the Samidhi three year old. Three year in this. Ha, so, in the dispensation is only three year old, whereas Potali Putta has been there for long. So he says, well now. Is it, is it what, Potali Putta is there for long? As per him. So he otherwise why he would ask this question? Oh. He's a wanderer. See, there are like uh, like um Aggivacha Sutta. Okay, so partly put the in wanderer, but senior in spirituality, not yes. in no, okay. Yeah, he is senior in spirituality. See, he says, well, now what are we say to say to senior mendicants when such even such a junior mendicant imagines their teacher needs defending? Oh, so you mean to say if you are like this, Buddha, Buddha is also full like that. Ah. Meaning, you are accepting one and rejecting the other. What does he say? He says, Well now, Okay, After doing an intentional deed by way of body, speech or mind, Reverend, what does one feel? This is again a question asked by Potali Putta to Samiddhi. He says, after doing an intentional deed by way of body, speech, or mind, reverend, one feels suffering. And, and actually, that statement is different. See, uh, when now, uh, what are we to say to senior monks when even a such junior monk imagines that teacher needs depending? Means Samiddhi's statement that don't say that, don't say that, he is is against that, right? He's why are defending you, why are you protecting your teacher? Yeah. Yes, I am. I am protecting my teacher. I, I am defending him. Yeah. Okay. So his question, then Samiddhi asked this question, after doing an intentional deed by way of body, speech or mind, Reverend, what does one feel? He says, after doing an intentional, uh, intentional deed by way of body, speech or mind. Who asked this question? Samiddhi. The first one is Samiddhi. The answer is from Putali Putta and then okay. Neither approving nor dismissing Samiddhi's statement, Potali Putta got up from the seat and left. Meaning, ah, oh, sorry, this question is asked by Potali Putta and answered by Samiddhi. Okay, and after neither approving nor non approving, Potali Putta left, got up from his seat and left. So he asked this question to Samiddhi. After doing an intentional deed, what happens? He says suffering. He is also wrong. Who? Samiddhi. It's not only suffering you get out of it. Then it is stupidity. So he thinks, Potaliputta thinks, like there is a statement, right? Yatha Raja Tata Praja. So as a teacher, so the student. The student is as ignorant as a teacher. Yes, so he gave Buddha by Samiddhi. See, Samiddhi is protecting Buddha. Right. So when he asked this question, two questions he has put forth. 
he agrees to one, saying that he had samapati, there is no feeling. And he disputes that by saying, when you do an intentional deed, you are getting, going to get into suffering. If you are going to get into dukkha, then where is the samapati then? How can that work? A minute ago you said in samapati there is no feeling. But now you are saying it is dukkha. That means you can't escape. No, he is not saying karma. He is not relating that, right? He is intentional, relating. No. Intentional karma, there is a suffering. No, he says from that statement onwards, Reverend Samad Samiddhi, how long has been since oh. you were where you went for? Not long, Reverend, three years. Well, now what are we to say to the senior mendicants when even such a junior mendicant imagines their teacher needs depending? After doing an intentional deed by way of body, speech or mind, Reverend, what does one feel? After doing an intentional deed by way of body, speech and mind or mind, Reverend, one feels suffering. Then, well, it's, neither yeah. approving nor dismissing Samiddhi's statement, Pataliputta got up from his seat and left. So, this is a previous statement. The right? Worrying about Kamma and worrying about Samapti. Huh. So, so in the previous statement, he says the mind. So, so if you control the mind by speech and body, you don't feel anything. But here he says even in the mind, by the way of body, speech or mind, one feels suffering. Correct. So the feeling is still there. So he does. Does the second statement is a, any way related to samapti? No. If you look at it, but he agreed to the samapati, right? Reverend yeah, so one, one part, but two topics are separate. So this so is basically contradicting his own agreement. He agreed that in Samapati one does not feel See, anything. After, after protecting the Buddha, he says, but Reverend, there is such, a, such an attainment where one who enters it does not feel anything at all. That means what Putaliputta is asking is not able to refute, is accepting to it. Then when asked, it's like asking, hey, when did you start your Buddha Dhapma? Uh, three years ago. Oh, okay, okay. Now, what is Buddha's teaching? Uh, when there, then there is no feeling at all. You are released. Ah. But what did I ask you? I asked the same thing. What did I ask? The feeling is not there in the body and the speech, it's only there in the mind. And you say no. And now you yourself is contradicting by saying there is something like that where it is neither felt in the body, speech and the mind. So I'm asking you, my dear friend, mm -hmm. when you do an intentional deed in the body, speech or mind, what happens? He says suffering. What? This foolishness. Utter foolishness. Oh, so, so on one side, if I am Samapati, on other side, if I do that, then suffering should not be there. Either Samapati or suffering, tell me one. If they can't be one, they can't be both of them appearing together, one. That means he has misunderstood the whole Dhamma is as per Potaliputta. And Potaliputta is right here. Yes, Ari. But, but what if in this samapati you are not doing any intentional karma, so there is no suffering? Uh, sorry, are you don't go beyond the sutta. I am requesting you again. Otherwise, this sutta will never be understood. You have to throw it out and go through another sutta. Because one problem you are creating for yourself is you are going outside and getting an information and fixing it as though this sutta is a very important thing for you. This is between Buddha, Samiddhi and Potaliputta. It's not with us. So we shouldn't be adding anything or removing anything from the Sutta. It's Before reading Sutta, three things we have to understand from uh, the context of the Sutta. You may to find context of the Sutta in Gata also. Also, you have to understand who is asking and what is his state. He is Uttujana, he is uh, Sakadagami, that some, some, somewhere you can find. And then thirdly, at the end, 
by hearing what happens that also Correct. we have to understand yes. this creates the importance actually this this story is this gatha around sutta and this this uh, this text is to tell you the importance and the levels at which you should read it okay so before we attempt to understand these kind of sutta including dn15 the maha nidana sutta the most complicated sutta dn15 it's not simple even if you read 100 times you will not understand unless you have reached a particular state yourself and you know what is he talking like uh shreyas asked me one day this recently can you give me a sutta reference where uh, vedana and tanha goes circle that is in manidana sutta dn15 you might read 100 times that circling you will not understand why it's beyond that person's reach so some suttas you shouldn't attempt what do you mean you cannot understand you you mean you cannot see the fact that it mentions that or you cannot understand Mom, why you will not see what is written there two you will not have a penetration three you will not have an insight four you will not have an awakening so you will not get anything you might get confused also yeah because of that you get confused and then you don't know where to go mm-hmm. see are you did you get this many questions when you read this sutta no but the the later half i find it very uh, i i learned a good amount from the, no, the second no that is, you have not understood those four context what he puts have you understood the, the context but from from when buddha start to 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 narrate what his view is sounds very reasonable everything okay felt... now you tell me now you tell me what is reasonable and what is unreasonable in that let me hear to your discourse now no i did i'm not trying to give a discord i'm saying all the things when buddha starts saying i want the, you to the, explain the, i want you to explain i want you to explain try it out you you mean try to see what i have understood yes absolutely i'm not yeah, yeah. i'm not trying i forgot the, i forgot the exact structure but basically he's saying someone can be doing the 10 immoral deeds but then they go to hell or someone can do the 10 immoral deeds but they go to heaven and someone may be doing the 10 immoral deeds and they go to heaven and then maybe doing the 10 immoral deeds and going to hell um and uh and any question let me see uh 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 hold on um yeah oh okay so it's, uh oh so it's, he said some some brahmin some people with spiritual power they saw that these four things happen and they conclude that the uh, kamma is you know if you could do good deeds you're just definitely go to heaven if you do bad deeds you're definitely go to hell or they say kamma does not ex- exist because if you do good deeds you may go to hell or and because they saw good deeds go to hell and they saw bad deeds go to heaven so they either conclude this is definitely going to happen or they conclude it doesn't exist the buddha said not the case he said um if someone so he again put the four case he said that the case where if you do the 10 immoral deed but still you go to heaven that means in the past you've done deeds that can lead you to heaven or by the time of your death you you gain some other deed which leads you to heaven and but that but whatever you have done these bad deeds in the future at some point you may experience you, or when you're living or the next life or future you may experience these fruit of these bad actions um yeah and and the, the other four i mean roughly that i think the most important thing is that it's it's the causal relationship it's not so easy to see even if you see you know if you're able to see to such time period you may conclude on the causal relationship and that could be wrong because because you haven't seen the whole you know the the whole if you are able to see all the history like put that then maybe then you can see the 
cost causation, but otherwise you shouldn't conclude based on you know the deeds and where they're going. Mm -hmm. But that that still affects some wrong view of mine. So I feel like it helped in that regard. Good, but how relevant it is to the to the question of Potiriputra? Yeah, no. And no, how do you think that you understood it then? <laughs> you said when you started reading what Buddha said, you understood, but you forgot what his original question was. So how relevant it is? Explanation of Buddha. So do you want me to answer? I can answer. I don't know. I, I, I feel like I couldn't follow this session. So Zachin and Shreyas, you can. This is, <laughs> I feel like I'm not really following. No, there's nothing to follow. This sutta itself is like that. It's not your problem. I understand your problem. You have gone through a good sutta, but <clears throat> it requires... No, I'm not getting any question actually. I'm, I'm... So, so, so far I am understanding, so uh, I don't want to go further, we will go together, that's why I am not reading further. Okay, so, thing is like this, first thing, does anything have to do, first thing we need to know what is Vedana, have you understood what is Vedana, first question you ask, have you truly understood what is Vedana, to its essence, what do you mean by Kaika Vedana? What do you mean by Chetasika? And after that, what is called a Do Manasa, So Manasa, Upek, and also the Sukha Vedana and the Dukha Vedana, Dukkha Asukha Vedana. Have I understood? Meaning, even if you were drunk, if you were almost strangulated or not able to get up, Somebody wakes you up and asks, you know what is Vedana? You should be able to know it. Not intellectual. Real. Not about you, Eric. So, so. Not about you. I have to ask myself. So don't worry. I'm not I'm not picking upon you, so don't worry about it. Now once I understand the Vedana, then I know that every karma has some feeling associated with. Every karma. Good karma, bad karma, you will have some feeling. You might feel neutral in your mind, but you might have a kaika vedana. It's painful. You might have neutrality in your mind. You might not even consider. Example. Now the status what has happened to me. The recent past with my king. I am feeling very sensitive to touch, but I can cut it off by talking Dhamma. But that is not going, right? That feeling exists. Is it due to my Kamma? Second thing, the speech. I have spoken so many things. Because of speaking so many things, I am in experiencing so many different kind of uh, life, life experience. Somebody is speaking lie to me, somebody is honest, somebody is doing this, somebody is doing that. Am I feeling anything about it? I have to really see for myself, is there anything called as feeling? Or is it my intellectual understanding of feeling? Once I penetrate the Vedana to its real sense, then it helps me to understand what is he talking. So to give you an, some examples for myself and also for all of us here, what is Kaika Vedana? Anything that happens in your body, you feel light, you feel heavy, the body after you eat, you feel agile, you feel 
non agile you feel body pain or you feel pleasure you feel wow somebody has given you a, a nice massage here. let's say my son comes and he says dad since i am an ayurvedic doctor today they taught me how to do this can you lend me your neck i say yeah yeah son is quiet i close my eyes and he starts yes actually he's pressing not massaging but the blood starts to flow to all this part of the body i feel relieved wow what an experience that is vedan now in english we put it as feeling but what really we experience this vedana what the point if somebody gives you a massage the feeling what you get is vedana and also if something is cut bruised out or something or you got hit and it has become big inflamed the feeling what you are getting there called by whichever language it is that is vedana it's giving you dukkha because you are not able to ah that feel. that feeling is kaika dukkha vedana and this pleasure ah oh superb ah what a great that is dukkha vedana yes and the uh, the kaika vedana cannot be neutral right it can only be sukha and dukkha is this said uh, that is correct so neutral is also there where you don't feel anything at all meaning so let's say that i'm like touching here so it's if i feel anything is it either dukkha or sukha or that it's not kaika vedana if if like i'm doing like this and the mind is not associated with it you will not be able to feel it so if mind will be there or not you will still have a physical pleasurable and physical painful feel even though it's you are still getting the information right you are still getting the information you yes. you, you you can say that it is a, a, something is touching me right but i i am not feeling sukha or dukha yes so something is there touch right? is there like i am sitting in the chair touch is there so you are feeling it but you are not able to recognize that feeling so that feeling which cannot be recognized is adhukka asukha vedana meaning so that's mind uh, need, need, need not be mind you your body you is one thing your body is another thing your body has its own consciousness which we already covered will give you all the three feeling it will give you a sukha vedana a dukha vedana a sukha dukha vedana but when things are running fine in the body you will not feel the body or the body will not feel itself or if you are not interested if you are very busy if you are looking if you are watching movie yeah in that case in that case or you have been given anesthesia that's an example just example anesthesia what happens that part of the body cannot be felt that is mm. neutral feeling you can cut you can do whatever you want to do i i'll give a live example had i gone for circumcision what they would have done they would have injected a local anesthesia to that place or applied a cream which is going to make that whole area numb that numbness is adukha asukha vedana of the kai anywhere the body gets numb is adukha asukha vedana because you can't feel anything like another example a person has met with an accident immediately after the accident it's like a whole body is in anesthesia he will not feel anything yes. yeah my understanding is of the ka let's say 
uh, chakku, right? You have sukha dukkha, sukha dukkha. You have come to the mental part. I am talking about the physical part. Oh, uh, so for the kaya, the sukha dukkha, sukha dukkha are, are all physical only, not not mental. But for chakku, is is mental. Again, you have come to the mental one. Yes, no. That is that's the reason he says salaitana. So let's stick to something. Don't jump. Stick to mm. the body. Kaik karma is what? Panati pata, adinna dana, kameshu mitchachara. These are the three bodily immoral deeds. Yeah, I, I guess I was just asking because I remember the kaya cannot have a dukkha sukkha. So I was wondering. No, why it I... doesn't have like what it has in the mind. But certainly there is adukha sukha in kaya. And when you come to vachi, it's again adukha sukha in vachi also. You will have a neutral feeling of speech. When you are reading, uh, when you are given, you, you are a speaker. So they will give you a write-up and you are reading it out. You have no feeling of what that dam is. That is exactly like you are reading a report. You don't have any feeling towards that speech. Whereas you like to do something, there is a Sukha Vedana in speech. You don't like to read something, you have a Dukha Vedana in speech. So because of that, you do four things. One, Musa Vada. Why you do, why I tell lies? Because I don't like something or I like something. So I will exaggerate which I like. I will diminish the one I don't like. So and hence I am doing a Musa Vada. Why I slander? Because I don't like that person's attitude. Whoever that person is. So I want to slander. The feeling which I am getting that he is not good. So I am slandering. Yes. Yeah, I guess I'm a little confused because let's say I tell a lie, right? There's a feeling, of, and let's say I, I, I do a purusavacha, I, I, I like a laugh, uh, say harsh speech at someone. So I say harsh speech because I feel some dukkha vedana before I say that, right? So because someone hurt me, let's say. So I, that is a speech. So that's what I'm telling you, that you. So what Potali Putta is asking, instead of going into such a detail, he is asking him, isn't it everything in the mind? Yeah, yeah, I was just trying to clarify what do you mean by the, let's say I'm being harsh at someone. Of course, the action itself, when I'm speaking it, there is also a feeling. But the reason I'm speaking is because previously I felt some feelings, right? Now, so, how did you how did you get that harsh thing? I can say it entered through my ear. So it yes, is mental. Yes. yes, yes. And because of that, I am having harsh speech. That's exactly what Putali Putta is asking. Mm. So he is right. Yeah, but I guess you're you're saying when I'm speaking something, when I have a harsh intention, there is a should create a dukkha vedana as a as a the deed is being done. You need not have a dukkha vedana. That is what again you are coming back to the mind, which is what Potali Putta is asking. And again, I'm repeating what he has asked is correct. I don't find any mistake in what Potali Putta is asking, because at my level, I can only see that much at my level of penetration. But uh, what is Buddha's response as usual? He, he said, you are foolish to the Samiti, he says. Right? And then, what he, what he said, you should have answered this. In that answer, he skipped. And he said, just say, there are three ways. Right? So, these two guys were discussing and actually de demifying the concept of Samakti, uh, de-evaluating de the concept of Samakti. Uh, they were talking about Samakti by referring to feelings 
and what Buddha says is forget forget about the topic of samapati. Just say there are three feelings, right? So in short, Buddha said you are not capable of talking to samapati. He skipped that question. Why? Yes, that is what it is. You need to look at the context of everything what is happening there. If you skip one of it, in fact, Buddha did not clarify. Buddha did not give answer. Buddha said, in in such conversation with such people, this should be the answer. Yes, you should answer it this way. He it is not the answer of Buddha. It is Buddha saying that you should answer to them. In fact, Buddha is saying that uh, don't don't get into discussion. So, why are you feeling so happy with Buddha's answer? I am not able to understand, are you? Because he is answering something which is totally irrelevant to what Tali Buddha has questioned. Yeah, and this also you should understand. When Buddha says, you should have said, so it is not Buddha's answer. If Buddha comes, Buddha becomes Samidhi and I, I would have been Samidhi, I would have answered like Answered that. it this that, way. Yeah, it is not the absolute answer of Buddha. Always remember that. In this situation, you should have answered this way. That's all what he said. He is always answered from the context. Now, you know what is going to happen in this sutta. Number one, there is one question. We are not sure whether we have understood the question. Number two, answer has a partial answer. Samiddhi answers one and doesn't answer the other. And when probed, Samiddhi gives a totally a different answer, which doesn't answer. How did he then say at Samapatti there is no feeling? And that act one is ended. In and fact, what I could see, what I could see, Samiti is wrong. At he said, someone is there who don't feel right, but he didn't understood sama, uh, samapati as he himself is not going to be there. Exactly. So, so that's why Buddha skipped that the totality of the samapati and said, just be here, just say this because you are not capable of answering. So if Samiti cannot answer. We are trying to un understand the question, the context, the answer, and we are thinking, ha, ah, Buddha is right. How? On what basis? I mean, everyone, when everyone reads the sutta, they can only understand to their level of understanding, right? That's how, how it is. So my when I'm reading it, at least when reading the Buddha's answer, there's new thing that I've learned that I no, did no, not. No, no, one, one, no, one that's what, that's what, uh, this, uh, this Ipitak is very clear in making the context. That's why I said, who is saying, on behalf of whom is saying, in which story, uh, in which level he is, all that context, they are, they are intentionally creating this context so that everyone, even they don't understand, they at least understand something. So, Ariyo, for you or me or anyone, so don't take it that I'm picking up again on you, it's not. What I'm trying to say is when we see a particular sutta, okay, and it gets muddled up, should stop. Don't go further. And don't even ask anyone, because you have to be convinced. Otherwise, the whole sutta will look a very doubtful thing. Not that we should not be discussing like this, it's a very good one discuss but then what happens is you will not be convinced you will not see unless you eat the fruit yourself that aha moment should come to you right then you feel happy yes go ahead okay i, I mean yes but i mean you say i'm not convinced but let's say i did not understand how buddha's answer relates to the question but still what buddha put is very no, you have not understood it either how you tell me now you tell me now. He says, I will grant this, I will not grant that. I will grant this, I will not grant that. I will grant this, I will not grant that. For all the four. Now, how do you justify it? So, let's say I am in my dying moment, just a minute before death. 
how will I reach to the heaven? But if, if I if I intend to the for the right thing and I change he the says view. we can't really promise it, right? Yeah, but he said that's one of the options, right? That's one right, of the options. But I have done, I have taken Buddha Dhamma for what? For what reason? See, read his line. What he says is, I don't recall even seeing the wonder of Patali Putta Ananda. Buddha says that I have never seen Patali Putta. So how could we have had such a discussion with him? So it is but it is within the boundary of Vinaya. He's he's putting Patali Putta outside of it. And outsider, you should talk like this only, he said. So the context Buddha is setting up is the Patali Putta is outside of Vinaya. So don't talk too much with them. When outsider asks you, ask answer this way. So number one, is he a follower of the Buddha? You will come to know in the end. Is he a disputer of the Buddha? He also will come to know in the end. So these kind of mendicants versus the ascetics, meaning the bhikkhus with the other ascetics. The and, and he also said, and, and he also rightly said this. But this foolish person, this means Samidhi. This foolish person, Samidhi, answered with generalization. That means his answer is very generic. He said he generalized his understanding. Yeah, and also when Udai was explaining for him, he also said, You're, you, you come with this nonsense. Right. So whatever it is, this sutta is too complicated to the stage we are in. First, we need to understand. Or we need to put in a lot of days, weeks of contemplation on that one single sutta. Why did he say like this? <clears throat> like the way we discussed yesterday night, that you put this question while sleeping. And before you wake up, you'll have an answer. And that will be the right answer. From how Buddha would have explained, or why he would have explained only these four. See, the question is different. The context is different. Understanding of Samiddhi is different. Right. Right. But I, I still feel like Buddha's analysis answered. No, are you? I'm telling you, I'm now dying. You tell me, can you take me to heaven? I guess there's so many conditions. I mean, no, no, that then then I don't have to follow Buddha teaching. Sorry, I'm hundred percent sorry that I have such a teacher who doesn't even help me in reaching the final or reaching forget final, reaching the heaven. But he said, if the dying moment, if you have the right view, you will. How not do I know? Through. How do I know who is going to help me at my dying moment? The dying moment. If someone can explain Dhamma to you, so you get the right that view. That means I am now conditioned. The whole objective was to uncondition. Now you are saying in a dying moment, I should call somebody who is a Buddha follower and tell him that, hey, you are an Arhat or Anagami or whatever you are, you now read out the Buddha teaching so that my mind uh, and on that. And it's a gamble. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. It, it so may that happen. Means, that means, so it's, better it's better than not having at all, right? No, that doesn't answer. The, the best is the best is start practicing right now. No, yeah, which are you? The thing is like this. I am practicing, but there's no guarantee from this sutta. I see there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee. There's no assurance. So what's the difference between other other sect and Buddha teaching? They both are the same. I, I feel like Buddha is saying, if you have right view at the moment of death, you will not How be going. How will you to get it? Is my that's my question. Now, now what is but right if, view? If you, start, if you start practicing today, you can it develops samadhi, and then you should not go to the hell. No, right? no. I, I, I recall now earlier when I read this, what what is what I understood is I was thinking like this that I have to finish all my past karma only then I get liberated. So my hard hard job is to. Separate that finish on the past deeds. Let the 
different people. That guy asked this question. That uh, that guy, Kanguli Mal killed hundred people, a thousand people, but he got uh, punishment of just beating little bit. Uh, on the contrary, uh, Moglana in past life killed his parents. So this is complicated thing. You have a bulk of backlog of to be finished. But what Buddha says is, if you somehow practice, and at the last moment of death, if your view is right, your backlog is clarified, nullified. I don't know if it's clarified, but at least you wouldn't go to hell, right? If you if you hold the samadhi, sounds like you wouldn't go to hell. You should yeah, go. Yeah, you, you wouldn't go to hell definitely. But at least that life, and uh, maybe you get a you know mitchatiti in the next life or whatever. But yeah, yeah, that, then it, then it will come back. Yeah, Not then that, it will yeah. clear it. Now tell but, me which. But if you become arhant in that last moment, even with the lot of backlog, if you become arhant, the backlog yeah. is uh, backlog is removed. Okay, tell me which samaditi are you talking about? The samaditi, there's ten michaditi, right? So if you at least don't have that ten michaditi, and now how yeah. do you practice for that? What's the practice? Because there's no practice mentioned there. In those ten, there are no practice mentioned there. You should have to drop the michaditi. No, no. What's the practice? It only says the. There's nothing called as father, mother, this, that is, you should leave it. Okay. How? I mean, it says you, it doesn't believe in Kama Vipaka. That is correct. You should believe the study Kama Vipaka and. No, no, no. That's the 10 Michaditi. How will you practice? How will you practice to remove those 10 Michaditi? Atti itam, atti hutam, like that. If someone's really firm that there's no benefit on giving, so you show them how they see there's no, benefit. No, are you at your dying moment? How do you bring that samadhi? That's the question. I, I don't understand the, the, I'm slightly confused about the, conf the question because it's not like, we can definitely help someone in the dying moment. Not right? help yes. anyone. How will you help yourself? Do you know that you already come out of the Micha Ditti of those 10? Let's say I read the 10 Micha Ditti. I don't feel like I have those. Does that mean I don't have no. that? No. What is the practice? How did you practice that? What did you do to leave those 10 Micha Ditti? And how confident it is that if that is your dying moment right now, those ten micha ditti are not there. That's why Marana was talking. You have to do something about it, are you? It's not about reading it or knowing it. That is not going to help. Now, one answer I can give you if you were to be, if I am to be asked. I have seen all the relevant. So to that extent, I know that what is written there is. So like that, do you have any experience which says to you? that unshakable, that even if you are drunk or made to be drunk or drugged or whatever, or even in coma, you will not have those michaditi. Yeah, I guess that because, because sometimes sometime we think that we believe, but it is intellectual. So we need to do something about it. So what he is saying there is 4 plus 3 plus 3, 4 by speech, 3 by body, and 3 by mind has to be completely practiced to be reborn in the in that existence. Got it? Otherwise, even one missing there will go back to hell. Even though you have done everything right. In those four. In, in in this sutta, he said, even if you do those ten right, means I don't know perfectly right or mostly right or what does that mean, but let's say perfectly right, still a past karma can catch up to you in the dying moment and bring you to the hell, right? Where does he talk about past karma? 
I mean, but still the possibility of going to the hell, you, even if you then do then to do everything no, right. He says the four answers to those four questions. There are four answers he gives to the four questions. Have you totally understood his answer? So, first thing we need to practice is samaditi of a normal kind, which is coming out of 10 immoral views. How do you practice? That's a question. Okay, I have understood. But how confident it is that I don't care about my dying moment? I'll give another example. Let's take a case. I am a God-fearing person. Very God-fearing. Now, as a very God-fearing person, do I believe that my actions, there are mistakes in my actions, I will have to run through the consequence? Or do I feel that God is going to take care of me? That's the question. I'm a very God-fearing person. Very God-fearing. Meaning you can't expect any God-fearing than me. But then do I know that any actions I do by body, speech or mind is going to cause either comfort or discomfort in the next life? Or do I feel God will take care of me? And if you ask me this question, in deep within my mind, I am relying on God because he is going to take care of me. I am his son. Children will do mistakes. Parents will pardon. So God will pardon to my mistake. Because I am son of the God. Isn't it not? Do I always think that all my actions are being recorded? No. None of us feel it. Whether we are Buddha follower or not a Buddha follower, doesn't matter. Do we know that everything is getting recorded? Like this video. Everything. We know there is Akashic records. We know there is Nama Gutta. All that we know. But do we really know? Do we really know to an extent that I am recording it? And in, in the Hindu religion, we have a very nice concept called Chitra Gupta. Chitra means picture. Gupta means secret. Secretly, you are recording. You press record. From the time you are born, you are press record. Your job is to keep on recording all the actions. Whether you said right thing, wrong thing, un nonsense thing, this thing, that thing, I did a wrong by body, speech, mind, this, right by body, speech, mind, all of that. It's getting recorded. So somebody were to ask, give me the witness. The video is there. Whatever was said is there. Am I aware of it? Am I truly believing in God then? Am I truly believing in karma? No. I don't. I'm actually atheist. Honestly. Because I don't really believe there's a next life. If I was, I will be shit scared in doing anything. But I'm doing all that I'm doing. Good or bad, it doesn't matter. I also believe that death is not going to come so soon to me. It's another Mitcha Ditti. Do I know it? If that level of uh, comprehension or that level of awareness itself has not come, this sutta is very deep for me, meaning too, too high to reach. Uh, I'm not even at a Putila Putta's level. Forget about coming to Samiddhi or 
somebody's level. I have not even reached Putiliputta's level. Because he's, his questioning is right. Maybe he's misunderstood or whatever it is at secondary. His questioning is right. Have I done like that? Do I know Michaditi for myself? And the answer is no. And he says, if that Michaditi comes, that means mind. Mind has three. Abhijja, Vyapada, Michaditi. Four plus three plus three. Potili Putta is asking, shouldn't I only take care of the three? And Buddha's answer is, no, you'll take care of all the ten. Not only three. That's his answer. And because of that, he says, I will grant this, but I will not grant that. Why? If you come and say to me that Kaika and, and the Vachi are not important, it will take you to hell. Why? You might have left Abhijja, Vyapada and Michaditi, but you have done something by body and speech. It has equal value. So 4 plus 3 is not going to work. I don't agree. Meaning, doing good deed gives good result. I agree. But if you miss something there, I don't agree. I don't give, I don't grant. I also grant, if somebody comes and says, bad deeds gives bad outcome. That I agree. But bad deeds gives good outcome, I don't agree. Why? Because at dying moment, he would have done something good. Now my question comes, what good he would have done? Some of the 10, in that 10, something he has corrected it in the dying moment. We need to go very deep, very deep, very deep into this and you will you have to figure out each one of them. If you take Kaika, you have to look at what he has done. Yes. Yes, are you? Yeah, I mean the, the, the grant, not grant. Maybe, I mean, from what I read is less complicated than what you're describing. He said he will also only grant if someone said there seems to be bad deeds and then and all that. He said yes. And then also if someone observed something, those four cases, he will grant them. But any other conclusion they draw, he doesn't grant. Why? He does because they're able to see due to their dint, they're due to their perseverance, they're able to see all the past lives of someone, someone. And they found that they had done bad deeds and they had got good result. They come and tell to them, tell to Buddha, he would not grant. So my question, and you to all of us, are we able to see like those ascetics? Are we able to see like those ascetics? If not, this sutta is not for us. Ito chuta tato jati. We should be able to see. That means here is being ended and there he is reborn. Yes, sir. I mean, in the end to, I mean, in the end to, or uh, the end one, there's all these ascetics seen all sorts of things. We were not able to see any of those, but we still studied there. There. That's why I'm telling you, unless we have, prof we have seen some, some of the suttas, you should just read it and leave it, and because they are not making any sense, because we are not at that level. If to, re to understand this sutta, Ariyu, is that first I should have developed my psychic power to see the birth and death of all beings. Even if we cannot exactly see, but we can still see the flaw there in their reasoning, right? What is the flaw there? In fact, Buddha doesn't answer to that at all. The original question is left out long time ago. Yeah, for example, in DN1, there are so for, many people saying... Forget DN1. DN1 is Brahma Jala Sutta. That you should read when you become an Arhat. 
Opinion. Yeah, but I mean, you can see there are some things that no, from Ari, being. No, Ari, I'll tell you one thing. You, we will become biased with Buddha. Buddha, Buddha, Buddha Dharma is middle path. Nothing to do with bias. Have we experienced what they have experienced? Have we experienced? Like when we were looking at pure Dhamma website and chatting, what we were doing? We were so biased. So worked up within our own shells, think that what is there, that's all what is Buddha Dhamma. The remaining is that's exactly Mogam Anyam, that everything else is silly. But do you mean to say if someone we cannot experience, we shouldn't read? It's not like that. We need to see where we are before we really go deeper because every sutta has to be gone deeper in the end. Whichever sutta you take, you take DN1, DN2, DN3, like that, you take whichever sutta. There are 39 suttas in all in DN and 152 suttas in Majjhimanikaya. You should select the sutta which is really resonating with you to complete it. You don't require all the suttas. No, you shouldn't read. It's a wrong. You, you should read. But if you don't understand, you should wait for understanding to come later. Yeah, see, you should stop it there. See, the thing, I'll, why I'm telling you this, Ariyu, is not because that we shouldn't be discussing like this. We will end up in intellectualizing and taking a stand. Taking a stand that Buddha is right. Because we, we are following the Buddha, so he can't be wrong. But we miss the context. We miss the situation, what he is addressing there. He is talking from Samiddhi's perspective. He is not talking from his perspective. Got the point? If Samiddhi would have explained to him like this, he wouldn't have come back as a Parajita. Parajita means one who has accepted defeat in the hands of Poteliputta. If Poteliputta came for, like uh, are you, I'll tell you one thing. You come to me. You are at certain level. You come to me and ask me a certain question on the Buddha teaching. And I give you some answer. And you ask me, Vilas, when did you join this monastery? Can you tell me? I say two years ago. Oh, you have to safeguard your teacher. Ah. So I can now understand how the senior monks would be in your uh, monastery. Anyway, tell me, I have these questions. How do, how do you answer? Then I give some lousy answer to you. What would you do? You'll get up and go. That's exactly what Potili put that. Now I go back to my teacher. My teacher will reprimand me saying that, hey, you stupid guy. If he asks this question, you should answer it this way. Okay, sir, I, next time if somebody asks me like this, I will tell him like this. That's the sutta what it is. Now what we are doing is, we are putting it as a Buddha's answer, Buddha's way of seeing things. No. It is for that question what Samiddhi has come back with. And that's the answer. Got the point. So we need to understand the context and we need to then dwell which level I am in. I am in the level of Samiddhi or am I in the level of uh, Udayi or whether I am in the level of the Putiniputta. And because this one minute, we don't have Buddha to explain to us in what context did he say. We don't even have Samiddhi, we don't have anyone, we have only a text. So we need to do like that. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Uh, that I, I, I agree with the better way to do is to able to follow in that way. But I mean, even before you reached where your level is today, you read through a lot of sutta, right? And back then, the understanding would be less than what you have gotten No, now. that is correct. But, 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 but the, back but, then, you didn't have benefit from reading those no, sutta. No, no, but the difference between you and me is in some suttas have skipped it. I came to know that I'm not at that level, skipped it. In some suttas, have gone deeper into it. And to be honest, I have not asked anyone. I have tried searching within myself, how much can I understand on this sutta? And only in places where I have got struggled, then only I have gone into the 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 thirty three sermons of uh, this uh, uh, Gnanananda hero. Other than that, 
I've no, I've tried finding it. Yeah, earlier I was reading almost putting almost eight hour a day in reading Sukta, but since last two three months after I made him right Savasthi. After that only one month I continued and then I dropped it. Now reading Sukta, but I'm listening to you guys. <laughs> See the thing is one good thing about a sutta is it gives you a lot of wisdom, but bad part of it you you just get the knowledge, not the wisdom. So you have to get the panya wisdom. So you have to select those suttas which are easy for you. I'm not saying you shouldn't read the sutta. You read all the sutta, but when you get stuck, right, like this, this is a context. So my question to you was, how much have you understood the question? Otherwise, we'll only go by these four categories. But I forgot this line. Actually, at some point of time, Buddha says, "We want to listen my answer." So this is his answer to Ananda. To Ananda. So Samiti is gone then. Samiti is sitting, and that's it. Over. So okay. he, because he's supposed to tell everything to Ananda, right? Ah. Uh, the deal is, anything happens, he has to tell Ananda. But uh, I found Buddha's answer straightforward. I don't find any confusion. No, what no, there is no confusion. I, I, I didn't say. <laughs> what, I what is the confusion of Aryu? Yeah, I don't have confusion ah. there. No, no. I don't have. He, with the star explaining, I don't. He have doesn't have any confusion. My question to him is, I, I didn't say he has a confusion. My question to Aryu is, have you noticed in that line? That how would you enter into hell realm while you are done everything good? How will you get a heavenly realm even though you have done everything bad? In the end, he has done something good deed, but how? Have you questioned? That was my question. That's all. Otherwise, the answer is good. There's a, there is nothing to pick up on. My understanding is that what you did now is just some of the factors that to be selected, and then. When you take rebirth, all the factor in the past come into play, right? And including not, you, not any of them. Yeah, right. So some yeah, some any of them. Of them. Something will yeah, right. and so you don't have to... I, I understand the logic. Maybe I don't mm -hmm. get the wisdom. Not, but... not just any, any, any that you have no control. Something will pop up in the last moment. See, Aryu, what what I wanted to do with this sutta for you is to open it up to make it broad rather than. Just sticking to that answer because you are asking me why did your question was on the thing what Samiddhi has put. Didn't even go. Yeah, the three, the three line, the three line answer yeah. given by Buddha. I did not understand it. Very no, well, no, so it's was... not by Sami. It's by Samiddhi, not by Buddha. He talks about the. No, 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 I give you, I give you the answer by by Buddha. He said that he should have answered this way, right? After ah. doing intense deed to be experienced as pleasant, one feels pleasure. I was wondering, what does that mean? Uh, that's what actually I, I understood it that way. As I said, don't uh, don't open up the whole whole teaching to as what to wonder. <laughs> just uh, just tell that there is feeling. Yeah, he said after doing it, deeds to be experienced as pleasant by body, speech, or mind, one feel pleasure. So I was thinking, ah, uh, does that mean if? This deed leads to pleasure, then it's a good karma. If it leads to bad feeling, it leads oh, to no, bad. No. It is. He just said there is a feeling of karma. And then, uh, do you know which lines I'm talking about? Uh, Wait, uh, just type it here then. The uh, lines. Yeah, the, the three lines. This. Right? Yeah, after doing an intentional deed to be experienced as pleasant by way of body, speech, or mind, one feels pleasure. After doing an intentional deed to be experienced as painful by way of body, speech, or mind, one feels pain. After doing an intentional deed, neutral by way of body, speech, or mind, one feels neutral. And answering this way, Samiddhi would have ri uh, rightly answered potential. Yeah. So he is not connecting it with the Kamma then? No, no. Kamma is that intentional deed. That is Sanchetana. Kamma. Chetana aham bhikkaves kammam vadami. So he talks about Sanchetana. That is a Sankhara when you create. You are doing an intentional, by intention you do something, you will have the pain or pleasure right here, right now. That you could have answered rather than answering ah, a different Okay, way. okay, okay. 
So don't talk about future. Don't talk about how these interlinking complications happens and how they are connected with the rebirth. Don't ask me that. But you feel in that moment, right? What do you mean? Correct. So you just have to stick to the current life rather than building something which is you are saying that everything ends up in a suffering. It's wrong. To the wanderers, to the wanderers, this is my teaching. So skip this complicated question. No, no, no. If you look at Samit, this answer, it is stupid answer. What he has come. Yeah, that is stupid. But if Samit, in place of Samit, the Buddha would have answered like this. Yes. So he says even when uh, Udai comes and says that he has answered like this, suffering includes in whatever felt because everything is dukkha. Right. Yeah. So any any feeling is treated as suffering only. Yeah, and Tithaikana Sutta Buddha said that only, right? <laughs> yes. So the feeling is dukkha. <laughs> so, so he is contradicting, right? The Buddha is contradicting. So he so these two guys are perplexed actually. How did we misunderstand Buddha teaching then? He himself has said that everything is suffering. Because he dukkha satcha is what? Yeah, that little part I understand. The Udai was taking it too far, right? He, he, it's no, out he's of not thinking too that. far. No, Titayatana Sutta, AN 3.61, exactly yeah. says that this feeling itself is suffering. Exactly. Yeah, I think I, I agree with Sachin, right? It's it's inappropriate for that condition, right? It, it's what it's is not inappropriate? appropriate. What is inappropriate? It's not appropriate in the, in the place of uh, the it should not be answered that context. way. Context. Inappropriate is the context. context. Yeah, not. See. Okay. I, I have to go. My, 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 Even my I have time. to go. It's already 10.20. So it's a good one. So we will take it on Friday, the remaining. Okay. All See right. Bye -bye. Good day and good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.